Hey everybody, I'm Dave with Growing the Home Garden. Today I'm out in the garden getting ready to plant one of my favorite perennials, and that is Russian sage. So I have two versions of Russian sage here to plant today, two varieties. One is the straight species, which is uh, Perovskia atriplicifolia. Uh, it has a new name for it. It is Salvia yangii, uh, Y-A-N-G-I-I, -I, or Yangi, however you want to pronounce that there. And this is the typical one that grows about four foot tall. Uh, you can see it's got some little serrations on the edges of the leaves, which make it pretty interesting looking, nice silver green type foliage. The other one is a shorter version called Little Spire, which grows to about two feet tall, but it has the same coloration, but not nearly as much deeply serrated leaves on here. Both of these plants are going to be fairly deer resistant. I Generally, I've never had an issue with the deer eating them, but with anything, take that with a grain of salt because deer do sample stuff before they decide they don't like it. And so you may end up with a nibble or two here or there on pretty much any plant, even the deer resistant ones. So what's important with Russian sage is that you plant it in the right location. It needs full sun. Anything less than that is no good for Russian sage. It really likes that sun. It also needs a well-drained location. Uh, you don't want to put it in a soggy spot anywhere in your garden. It needs to be well drained. It needs to be able to dry out. It doesn't need to have soggy feet. You get soggy feet and it will start to rot. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, it's a pretty maintenance free plant. Now, one thing I do want to share with you, just a tip, and this goes to pretty much a lot of other plants too. When you're planting it, if you want to grow a nice bushy plant, go ahead and pinch off the stem tips here, just like that. And what that will do is it will trigger the plant to start sending off branches along the sides. New branches will form and they'll grow new leaders of their own. You can pinch those back a little. Do that the first couple weeks of planting and then let it grow and you'll have a nice bushy plant. And you can do that for this, salvia, catmint, lots of different plants. So here is the location where I'm going to plant the species version of the Russian sage. And I'm going to use these plants as a bit of a backdrop. This is North Wind Switchgrass, which grows to about four and a half foot tall. And it is just a beautiful uh, ornamental grass that's native to the U.S. Uh, North Wind is one of my favorites because it it's, goes very upright and it has nice foliage. And all you have to do with it is really cut it back in the early spring and then let it regrow. And it does really well. So here is how I intend to plant them. I'm going to have these three here in a triangle, and then the four switchgrass will become that backdrop. It'll be a nice green backdrop so that the, the flowers of the Russian sage will really stand out. So I had a really hard time sourcing these little plants right here. Uh, locally, I just could not find a nursery that was carrying them. They were all carrying a different brand, a corporate brand that was a patented variety. And for me, I like to do a lot of plant propagation. So I do want to do that legally. I don't want to be propagating patented plants. Um, we'll have another video about that. But I do see a negative on this where you're not able to find some of the older varieties of plants because we're replacing them with all these newer versions, these new patented types. And they're not always a better version. Sometimes you might like the older version a lot better, which in this case I did. So these all came from a mail order nursery and uh, they came really well packaged and they were nice and healthy little plants. So I was extremely happy with what I did there uh, and I would do it again, but not for these because I'm going to be propagating them. So digging a hole for these is pretty simple. You don't really need to go very deep. We don't want to bury the top of the crown of the plant, but below the mulch. We want to have that actually up above the mulch so it is nice and well drained. So I'm going to build or dig a little bit of a hole here to kind of punch around the sides of it so that there's some areas for the roots to grip and then we're going to put our little plant in the ground after we remove it from the pot you can see pretty good little root system here not too extensive not really pot bound either it should do well and i'm going to put this just gently in so it is staying mostly level with the top of the mulch here. We'll pat it in just a hair. And then we'll just backfill with some of what we had in there before. We definitely don't need it all. Just kind of work that around. You'll notice that the soil is a little bit moist still. We've had some recent rain. And that's another great thing. If you have had rain 
or you have an overcast day, that is the perfect time to be planting stuff because they adjust really well when you do it that way. Today we've got a couple days, uh, starting today, the next two days of rain in the forecast. And so these plants should have some gentle conditions in order for them to acclimate to their new homes. We'll just backfill. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room around the crown of the plant so that it is not covered with mulch. We don't want to introduce any type of rot situation happening here. And then, like I said a little earlier, I'm going to pinch the tips of this so it will grow a little bushier and fill up. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to get these other two planted and in, in the ground, and I'll show you what it looks like. These plants will all grow together very nicely over time, and they're planted in a group. And I will probably expand this out a little gradually, but this is where I'm starting. I always like to get plants that I can propagate so I can kind of grow a mass of plants all together and do it very cheaply and affordably. It used to be that you could get plants like this for 3 to $4 at local nurseries. And now with the patented varieties, you're looking at 10 to $15 for most of them in a larger size pot. And it's just not that economical in a lot of ways. So that's why I go to plant propagation for things and make sure that I get ones that I am legally allowed to propagate. So the species version of Russian sage, I planted with some Northwind switchgrass. And I've got another type of grass here called prairie drop seed that I'm going to plant the smaller version with in a slightly different location, just a little further over in our front garden bed. And this will grow in, if you can look at the picture there, a nice clump that sort of has this grass that likes to fall over and it just looks really cool. And I think it together with the Russian sage will look like a nice uh, landscape drift of plants put together. So we've got some other plants to, to work in around it. But for right now, we're going to do the prairie drop seed and the smaller version, the little spire Russian sage. Uh, I do have some of these growing from seed that I started that once they're large enough, I'll put in and around and kind of fill up the area. Because one of my biggest goals is to eliminate the amount of mulch because I threw a lot of mulch on this garden area and I don't want to have to do that every single year. Not only is it expensive, but it's a lot of labor. So that you can get a little bit of a reference, I'm going to have the Russian sage and the prairie drop seed more over in this area. We're planting a tree to go here in the middle, and you'll note that I've got a few perennials and stuff started on this side of the garden. But for now, we're going to kind of come over here, and the idea is to kind of reference the Russian sage here and call back to the Russian sage over there so that we have something tying the whole bed together all the way across. We'll have those nice grasses in the back with the north wind and then the Russian sage in front of it. And then over here, we'll have the same pattern with slightly different plants that have a lot of things that tie themselves together. The prairie drop seed is a full sun plant. It likes moisture, so we're gonna cite it a little differently than we would the Russian sage. And it grows two to feet tall, zones three to nine good plant to have in the garden, especially if you're trying to go native and you're trying to eliminate a lot of mulch. So here's the basic layout right there. I've got the four prairie drop seeds in the back and then the three Russian sage over here. Very similar to what I did over there with those plants. So we'll just kind of keep the pattern going. And what is nice about these perennials is they can always be transplanted as they grow and need divided. I can move them around. If I'm not happy with this arrangement, it can always get adjusted. So it looks like I got them in just in time. We're about to get pouring rain. It's starting to come down right now. But I've got those Russian sage planted with the switchgrass over here. And then the prairie drop seed, those little plants right there. And our little spire Russian sage. We'll give them a good chance to settle in with this rain and should be looking good. And in a few weeks, these will really have grown quite a lot more than what you see right here. Russian sage grows really fast and produces beautiful purple flowers. So I hope that was interesting and helpful to you. If you have any questions about Russian sage, pop them in the comments. There's also a video that you can watch right here about propagating Russian sage. So again, I'm Dave with Growing Home Garden. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on Growing Home Garden.